He got so much better in that offseason with handling the ball. Who knows what the hell he did that offseason. Yeah, but man. I haven't seen that Jalen Brown again. You know what I, I mean? And, 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 and he's always been a better defensive player. Always. Always been a much better defensive player. And right now, I think we're at a point now where he's just point out, period, the better offensive basketball player. Now, Jason does do a couple of things better. I think Jason is a better playmaker out of the two. You know, he's not a f- bum. You yeah, know, yeah. he's not Tobias no, no, no. Harris. No. He's he's a really good damn basketball player. Yeah. I, you know, but I just think there's more things that Jalen Brown could do on the court better. And not to mention the mentality, the clutchness, things that f- really matter yeah, 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 no. on the basketball court that Jalen Brown possesses that Jason Tatum has never even shown. Who's, who's the better player? I, I don't think there's a clear-cut answer. You don't think so? Coming out of the Warriors series, like Jalen Brown played kind of good, but it was also obvious he couldn't dribble with his, his, his offhand, and yeah. he had some strange turnovers, and but, he but, bad. But he was better than Jason. And, and to Tatum, to, I, I, like, in that series. To, to me, if you look at it from a psychological perspective, I think Jason Tatum's biggest weakness is his affinity for Kobe Bryant. I think it's it's ridiculous. And I told somebody this the other day. When you get to the finals, it has to be about you. And, and I don't mean that in the sense of, of negative ego. I mean it in the sense of positive ego. You, whoever you are, got to that point. It's on you to win that. Channeling and texting a dead guy, that's not anything that's going to help you win. And, and that's what he does. Yeah. And then he did this shirt this year. Like, you know, just stop. You got here. You go win this thing if you can. And I think whatever, I don't know if it's maturity, I don't know if it's a psychological defect, he seems to be drawn to that stuff. And I do think it kind of, like, affects his performance. He doesn't, you know, always seem to rise to these moments. But I do think, you know, he did not have a great series. I don't think he had a signature game, per se. But I thought he was good. And I thought he did what you know, he needed to do in some of the games, you know, he scored a little bit. Other games, he had some decent board work and some other things going on in his game. And he did what it needed to take. And by the same token, I think a little bit with the defensive role that, that Jalen took with Luca. And again, I think he really responded like in a two way, because sometimes a guy will take a big defensive assignment and lock in so much on that to the, to the extent that his offense suffers. I, I think Jalen struck a beautiful balance of defensive commitment and focus on a, on a significant task, but not at the sacrifice of, of being an open offensive player. To me, he like thrived in the moment of these finals. Like he accepted all the challenge that was in front of him. And to me, he's a deserving MVP of this finals, but it's, it's not like, it's not a static thing where he's completely the better player all the time. I I think it's clear cut, and I think it's clear as day. I, I I think, I think what gets in the way of people, thought process, is Jason Tatum was the better player, and traditionally has been the best player on the Boston Celtics team, their entire time. But I believe in the past two years, that's when the shift changed, and players get better. Yeah. And I think Jason Tatum has kind of just kind of stayed the same, and Jalen Brown has continuously just gotten so much better, improved almost like a maxi trajectory. It's just every year he's getting so much better. When, but but on the contrary to Jason Tatum, when Jason Tatum came in, of course you have the the natural progression from a rookie to where you're at now. But but he came in as the more heralded player. And also, but you know, he just kind of stayed as a really good damn player. For example, the the final the final series against Golden State, yeah, Jalen Brown was weak with the ball. That was his, that was a shown weakness. Even though he was the best player in Boston in that series, okay, yeah. But we haven't seen that again since that. We haven't seen that weakness since then. He got so much better in that offseason with handling the ball. Who knows what the hell he did that offseason? Yeah. But I haven't seen that Jalen Brown again. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's been good and, and 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 he's always been a better defensive player. Always, always been a much better defensive player. And right now, I think we're at a point now where he's just point out, period, the better offensive basketball player. Now, Jason does do a couple of things better. I think Jason is a better playmaker out of the two. 
You know, he's not a fucking bum. You yeah, know, yeah. he's not Tobias no, no, no. Harris. Yeah. He's he's a really good damn basketball player. Yeah. And I, you know, but I just think there's more things that Jalen Brown could do on the court better. And not to mention the mentality, the clutchness, things that fucking really matter yeah, yeah, no. on the basketball court that Jalen Brown possesses that Jason Tatum has never even shown. No, and my, my, you know? my, my mentor, Matt Hicksonball, coaching-wise, he was in St. Louis when, when Tatum was coming up and – yeah, he's always criticized his mentality and and being a guy that can actually respond in the clutch, and you know he's had a lot of issues in his career in that. And uh, I, I I don't disagree with what you're saying. Yeah, I just don't think we live it in the in the present. Like Jalen Brown won MVP of the playoffs and of the finals. Yeah, and he was the more consistent player throughout the year. Now, and right, and let's go, go one further. He's do, he's had this campaign. The season he becomes the highest paid player in yeah, ever. Yeah, back to like up. credit to him. Credit to him. Like I, I love Jalen Brown. I mean, yeah. I, like, like, and it's funny because I think like, and maybe this is perception you're talking about. Like, I used to call him my favorite non All Star player. Yeah, and because I love what he brought to the table. I loved like his his offense, his defense, his mentality, all that. But I mean, there's no question at this point that he is a star in his own right. He's not. He can't be considered a sub All Star guy that you like a lot. Yeah, he is a genuine star, and and, and people and, and I, I've seen the arguments. I haven't even jumped in them because one thing they'll run to is, "Oh, but Jason Tatum is all first team NBA, and he's this and he's that." Yeah, but you know, those are media relate. What 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 do you, what are you fucking watching? Like like because it's clear as day if you're to me if you're watching the game. At least even if you don't say who's the better player overall or whatever. This year, just this fucking season, who was the better player? Because yeah, I know Jason Tatum is the more heralded guy. He has more uh, achievements, you know. And 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 it's a shame because a lot of players, something has to happen for them to start getting the attention they deserve. It doesn't change the fact how great of a player they are, but they may not have the All NBA first team. They may not have the MVP votes or whatever. Right. Um. And there's different reasons for that. The market that you're in, they, the attention that you're receiving. You know what I mean? Yeah. It shouldn't have to take. It shouldn't have to take a Finals appearance and a Finals MVP. To, and now he's going to start getting these awards. He just oh, is. For, for sure. But it shouldn't It shouldn't take that. It didn't take no. it for Tatum. It didn't take it for like 95% of the league who gets these awards. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it it, it still is a thing, though. I mean, it still is a thing. Like, I mean, it, it like, shouldn't look, be. I know it's a thing. I'm, a, yeah, I'm admitting yeah. it's a thing. It yeah. shouldn't be because yeah. it's not for other players. There's players on shit playoff teams who just get the attention, whether it's because they're in larger markets, because they have a podcast, because they have this or that, that they get these awards over guys like Jalen Brown. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't. I don't know. That's a tough one for me. It really is. No, I mean, not, I mean, not to say that he's he's not a star at this point. I mean, I completely agree with that. I guess I just I don't know. I get lost sometimes when you talk about like. Other guys on other teams getting accolades. Like, I, I, like, who are they? What accolades are they getting? And like, what, what exactly are we talking about? You know, because yeah. at the end of the day, this guy's now a champion. And you know, he and and my other thing is like, and why I started with with Tatum and Brown. It's like, like, they both benefit from playing together, and that's massive. Like, it, you know, they're not. I'm not saying it's 100 percent complimentary to throwing blind passes to each other. But at the end of their careers, they have to be thankful that they played with each other and got themselves in the situation that they were in. And that includes being coached by Brad Stevens, by being in an organization that, that found multiple good coaches and made great front office moves. Because careers change on that stuff. Yeah. And, and, and you know, I look at the Celtics as, as like a totality of their success and, and Brown – was the, the front runner of that through this playoff run and credit to him. Um, you know, and so, and maybe there is going to be a shift. You know, I'd be interested to see next year, really, like even internally in the Celtics, you know, do, is Brown now believed to be the alpha in that locker room? And does, does, how does Tatum react to that? Does he accept it and, and they stay complimentary and move forward and play at a high level together? Or does that cause an internal friction that divides the uh, budding Celtics dynasty? Yeah. And it could, you know. Yeah, yeah, only one could hope. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> only one could hope.
No, I'm, I, I'm not hoping that. I'm, I'm hoping they they keep this together and be great. You know. Yeah. I, I you know, I, 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 I it's, <laughs> I'd rather talk about greatness than dysfunction. Yeah, I just don't think it's greatness. That's where we disagree. Well, what do you define as greatness? Then? The team is great. I'm talking about the, the the players. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but I, I don't see greatness when I see Jason Tatum. I just don't. He's a champion. I just don't see. No, I don't see no, greatness. no, no. I, I I was referring to it as collective. I know, I know. I yeah, know. collectively. I mean, that's because yes, that, that's it's, it's, that's it's collective. That's the thing. That's I mean, that's what this. It's a team. But we sport. don't. But it's a team sport. We don't talk about teams. Not sure. even us on this show. We never talked about teams. We only talk about players. We only talk about Jordan, LeBron, uh, Wilt Chamberlain. The Kobe. We don't talk about the 1983 76ers. We don't talk about the 2001 Lakers. We're talking about, when we talked about Shaq, no, even we just talked about Shaq two weeks ago, we didn't talk about the Lakers at any point oh, yeah, of that okay. conversation. No, no, that, 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 that's, a, that's a disservice on our part for sure. Yeah, yeah, but the, even the national because wait, Because it, it, you can't have... The the you know the championships without that, you just can't. You're you can't, not going to get there. But we have the conversations without them. Right, right. No, I get what you're saying. And that's like, not fair. Maybe, yeah. maybe we need to pivot on that because it it again it becomes the collective greatness on us. Yeah. You know, I, I again, you, you're a Luca guy. Like, what you know, like, what do you take away from this? I mean, most of your Facebook posts were the lack of support. Like, they didn't have the team to win this series, and Luca, you know, kind of did his thing, but it wasn't properly balanced or properly supported by by the team around him and you lose 4-1 i mean that's the thing and so like you go into the off season if you're dallas we know what luca is like what do we need to change around him and it's fair to say what does he need to change internally to find another level you know that's that's the process that you go through yeah i yeah dallas is screwed I mean, there's you think they're screwed for at least the next couple of years, yeah. Because you can't move off Kyrie. You're not going to move off. Not it's not that you can't move off Kyrie. You're not going to move off Kyrie. Right. And I don't believe. I've always believed that Kyrie is not the guy that everyone believes he is. I just I've always been in that camp. Okay. And um, I know he hit the big shot in that series, and it was a right. great shot, all time shot. But yeah. that doesn't alter my thinking of he's not that player he's not the Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum he's not the not whatever below that below that yeah yeah he's below all of the second the Scottie Pippins but all of those guys he's, but when you he's say the team is screwed though like I'm it, saying they're like, screwed because you're not you know even if I'm in that position you just you're not going to move off Kyrie you're just not but but what I'm saying then, is is there a way without moving off Kyrie no. that you could build enough around it no no and um it, because the way the league is going now you you just you need as many two way guys as possible. Yeah, you know what I mean. The way to support Luca is for that second star to be a Jalen Brown. Like like it helps the the reason why Jalen Brown has Jason Tatum so much is because Jalen Brown is the best defender in the yeah. on that team. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Luca needs that second that's, guy that's to be had. the best defender on that team. That's what you had. That's with, what Luca needs. Scotty and Michael. Yes, yeah, what you had with Scotty and Michael. Yeah, yeah. That's what you have. You know, Aaron Gordon is not technically the second guy, but in a lot of games he is. That's what you have with Aaron Gordon, yeah. whatever Anthony Davis, and you, the list goes on and on. And so you, when you, when that's 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 what you need. And Kyrie's just never going to be that. And I, then when he gets in a series where he can't even be his best offensive self, that's known the lack of defensive versatility he yeah, can bring. Yeah, I guess I'm You're looking, at it. I'm looking I mean. at it from the perspective of what can you do at the other spots. 